Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel. It is Dion. If you're new here, welcome. I was thinking today that my channel seems to be <laughs> like a box of chocolates. When you come here, you never know what you're going to get. Either I may be a troll or I may not be a troll. My eyes will be wonky because I'm still trying to figure out where do I look. But it looks like I'm looking at you. When I'm looking at the camera, it looks like I'm looking that way. And the camera in the middle of the ring light is behind my phone, which is why I'm looking now, which probably looks like I'm looking at you. So I'm still trying to figure this out. I was also thinking that it's really strange to me that I come on here and talk about makeup. I'm noticing it's kind of dark. And I usually don't even have on makeup. And so while I'm just chit-chatting, I am going to do my base face. It's like 9 at night. I'm not going anywhere. Sometimes I just don't want to be a toad when I'm in front of the camera. This is the Fenty Face Primer, which my skin does really like. And I'm going to do my foundation. I'm going to run through what I'm going to put on, and then I'm just going to put it on so that way I can just babble. And this video is going to be about lipstick contamination, and that contamination is not always a bad thing, and I'll explain why. So that was the Fenty Primer. Cover FX um, G60 is the foundation I'm going to use. Sephora Bright Future Gel Serum Concealer in Caramel Cream. Excuse me, Cream Caramel. And I will be using the Fenty Cashew Setting Powder. Fenty um, Island Ting Bronzer. And blush from the Alamar Palette that I received a little while ago in BoxyCharm and Tarte Emphasize Rich Brown Gel well it says gel mousse what does it say I just read it right brow mousse for my brows but I don't I don't know if I'm actually going to do my brows but we'll we'll see because of how quick I babble and um Fenty Gloss Balm I think this one is Fenty Glow so that's what I'm going to put on my face for foundation, I'm going to use the Sephora number 78 brush, which I love. I, I, I do believe it's still on sale at Sephora for $18. Awesome brush. I like it for foundation and also for concealer because I can get right under my eyes. Powder brush. I'm go, For powder and contour. I'm not even going to contour. For powder and for bronzer and blush, I'm going to use my Hourglass Dual Ended Brush that came with their setting powder. It didn't come with the setting powder. It came separate. See what I mean about a box of chocolates? You never know if I'm just going to speak gibberish, if I'm just going to make up stuff, and then I'm going to, like, reframe it to where it all somehow kind of makes sense a little bit, maybe? And if I do my brows, I'm going to use the brush that came with the brow mousse, which is what I was thinking with that one. So one side is a spoolie, which I really like, and the other side is angled to apply the product. So, what I was thinking about today was that contamination is not always a bad thing. Con contamination just means that something is in a product that was not intended to be there. And the example I'm going to use is going to be real simple. It's going to be real simple. I'm going to use peanut butter and jelly because we can all relate to this. I think we can all relate to peanut butter and jelly you want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich right so you pull out your jar or your your, your can of preserves or your bottle of preserves your jelly your jam whatever you use and you pull out your container of peanut butter so you have a jar of jelly a jar of peanut butter i want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich so you pull all that out as most of us do you either put jelly on one slice of bread or not, but we're going to do it this way. We are going to put peanut butter on one slice of bread. We're going to sit the butter knife down and we're going to close the container of peanut butter. Then we're going to open our jar of jelly. We're going to pick up the knife we just used with the peanut butter and we're going to put that knife inside the jar of jelly and we're going to scoop out jelly and put some on our bread. When you look inside your peanut butter jar, <gasps> I mean, I'm sorry, you look inside your jelly jar, <gasps> there's peanut butter in my jelly. 
your jelly is contaminated. You know what it is. You know it's peanut butter. You know the peanut butter's not spoiled. You know it's not bad. So you still eat it. We've all done that, right? If you've done that, leave a comment. Yes, I've put my jelly knife in the peanut butter or I put my peanut butter knife in the jelly jar. It's contaminated because your jelly was not supposed to have peanut butter in it. If you purchase jelly at the store and you get home and open it and there's peanut butter in it, you're going to be like, what the hell is this? Like, oh no, I'm calling the store. I'm taking it back, blah, blah, blah. But because you did it, you know what it is. And it is perfectly fine. About this lipstick contamination stuff, don't insult people's intelligence, okay? It may be safe to use, but to say, oh, yes, it's 100% safe to use, you don't know that because you have not tested to see what all of that stuff is that's in your lipstick. You haven't tested the hairs that are growing on the outside. You haven't tested um, the hairs that are embedded <laughs> inside the product. You haven't tested the black hairs to see what they are. You haven't tested the blah, 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 blah. You haven't tested what you're saying are the possible causes of the air bubbles. If it's too much wax, so be it. Um, but to say that something crystallizes, that means it turns hard. These balls, when some people cut them open, were hollow. That's not crystallized. So that is not crystallized wax. In my opinion, I'm not a chemist, I'm not a biologist, like, I don't know. But I was thinking about this earlier today. Yes, y'all, I'm in deep with this lipstick scandal. <laughs> um, so me saying all, all things contaminated are not bad. I'm not saying that her lipsticks are not bad. I'm just saying... Don't have your intelligence insulted by somebody telling you something is perfectly 100% safe when they don't even know what it is. That's all I'm saying. We know they're not safe to use. Someone's already posted a picture, and I said this in my other video, that they cut their lip. Something in the lipstick cut their lip. So it's not safe to use if something in there is cutting someone's lip. And I'm pretty sure that that's not the only person that it happened to. Because any product or anything you put on... And it feels grainy, there's a potential that it's going to tear your skin. Even if it's just a little minute tear. If something is scratching, even sometimes you might scratch your arm, you look later, there's like a line there or something like that. And because you don't know what it is that's in there, you don't know if it's going to get infected. You don't know if you're going to have any allergic reaction. Like, you don't know. So, don't tell me it's 100% safe. You don't even know what it is. So I was just thinking about that. And what else was I going to say? I think that might have been it about that. So just use products at your own risk. All contamination is not bad. But just think. Think about what you're putting on your face. And think about the potential risks. There are a lot of things that are hazardous to me, not deathly hazardous, but I'm sensitive to fragrance. My skin is sensitive. I have, I have eczema issues. My skin is dry. My T-zone gets oily. I'm sensitive to fragrance. I have allergies, both eye and nasal allergies, and I have asthma. So a lot of products I'm not able to use because it's hazardous to me. It causes reactions to me. My face will break out. I'll get hives. I'll get bumps. And so everything is not for everybody. And so somebody like me, I would err on the side of caution and just not use certain things and just judge for yourself like what you want to use or not use but just think for yourself like even though I'm saying you know it might not be safe it may be safe it may just be the wax that's crystallizing do I believe it no but it that may be what it really is but just don't say oh, this is perfectly safe, and you don't know what it is. To me, that's an insult. And if people want to believe that, that's fine. It really is. But you're not going to convince me that a foreign object is okay. What you need to do is have, you know, when people send these lipsticks back, send it to the lab, have them tested, or send it to a chemist. And have them tested. Then issue a report saying this is what we found. And it is okay to use. Or it's not okay to use. Or these are the reactions you may get based on um, complaints and concerns that we received from our paying customers. Right? 
and don't hide it on the website put it on the first page of your website or if you only have lipsticks on your website if you only have lipsticks on your website um, put that on your page where your lipsticks are so that way when they go to purchase a lipstick the disclaimer is right there like here's a report you know click this link for the report for such and such and then let people make their own decision because in that way you will not be held liable because you put the information out there it was easy to see it was right there in plain sight on the website they still decided to use it you know then that's on them but just be honest and do your due diligence and finding out what stuff is and so that's it for this video and I got done my face quicker than I thought and so thank you for watching and now that my face is painted, I'm going to do a video unboxing my BoxyCharm. And so, thank you guys for watching this video. Leave your comments below, like what you think about contamination. Is it always a bad thing? Is it sometimes not a bad thing? Um, do you think something's safe just because somebody says it is? Or would you rather... Be told what it is first and then you decide whether or not to use it I need setting spray because I'm looking powdery in this mirror down here so let me know your thoughts on that I almost forgot my gloss I'm wondering why my lips are dry is it from the lipstick <laughs> it is not that was a bad joke <laughs> fancy gloss bomb so let me know below what you think also, what do you think about me talking through videos putting makeup on? I, I do think this look is preferred to the toad look. <laughs> and so if you would like me just to sit and just, you know, put my base face on and babble about whatever, then just let me know that. Or would you prefer me just to have my face done and come on here and bab, blab about something? Or... Whatever. <laughs> I do think this is preferred. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for watching. I'll see you in the next video.